Hey everybody, I'm going to talk about how to use uh, the website Zooniverse. We're starting to explore citizen science, an opportunity for you to do real science and participate in real projects. Uh, we'll be looking at Zooniverse and SciStarter. I'm going in through the maroon class, but you can do it through gold class. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, remember, you start with classwork. And then Zooniverse is going to be on assignment three. And let's take a look at the Google Doc. What it shows us is that you're going to need a list of three projects, and I want you to write a description of your favorite project, one that you might want to participate in. We, don't have, we won't start participation yet unless you just want to. I just want you to sort of explore that website and see what some of the projects are. So you're going to need to find three that you think are fun, and then what is your favorite one and write a short description on it. So how do we get there? This is the link right here uh, on how to get there. Projects in Zooniverse. We'll click there. It takes us to this page. All, right, all types of information on this in this website. Zooniverse has been around for quite a few years, and they have lots of projects for people to get involved in to do real science. Uh, and if you look across the top, it says projects about get involved, talk, build a project, and news. Right. So those are other places we might want to get in. Uh, and as we look down, we can see there's all types of disciplines. Right now it's clicked on all disciplines, but you can go through, you can work in any of these, even though you may have chosen uh, nature, you know, the earth or space. Uh, you can work in climate, you can work in history, you can work in language, you can work in literature, you can work in medicine, right? There's all different types of areas of science that you can participate in projects. So you can either just scroll through all the projects as you go down. These are thumbnail images of those projects. And you can keep going page after page, click on the number, and you get another set of projects. Uh, right? Baby sounds, all types of different things. Uh, so lots of different things. I'm kind of a space guy right now, so I'm going to click on space. And now I'll see there's a variety of projects here. And it's hard to know, so I'm going to click on one. Uh, maybe this one says, protect our planet from solar storms. Identify the most complex solar storms to help us protect you to help us protect planet Earth. You know, and maybe I would write down that as one of my one, or one of the three that I need. And there's Solar Storm Watch. And even, you know, maybe I want to, there's a whole nother, there's two, another page. Maybe on the second page, Gravity Spy. That sounded like I, I heard about this one a little earlier. It's helped scientists at the, where they're detecting black holes using gravity, uh, search for gravitational waves. Well, that sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to click on that uh, and help scientists. And you, if there's a learn more button, this is what the information you need to help describe. Right? So you might have to do a little reading and then do a summary of what you've read. Right? This tells you the history of what's going on. So yeah, it might take a little time to work on this, but that's OK. You've got time. Right? And you can figure out who you're working with, what the results look like. I'm not asking you to rewrite that. Just give me the information about what's going on. Then up here, we've got about and then classify. And I'll click on classify. And it's first just going to give you a summary of how to participate. And it tells me, welcome to Gravity Spy. The image that you're looking at is called a spectrogram. It's showing a glitch from LIGO's data, which is a signal that can hinder the search for gravitational waves. The spectrogram is plotted in time frequency space, uh, which means the horizontal axis shows Oh, I, didn't. I should have scrolled down. Sorry. Shows how long the glitch lasts, and the vertical axis shows the frequency that the glitch is ringing at. The color represents the loudness of the glitch, which indicates how much this glitch moved the arms of the detector. This particular glitch came from the observatory in Hanford, Washington. And it's going to take you through the whole process to show you how to participate. But right now, all you need to do are those two things. You're going to be looking at projects, right, a list of three projects I'm interested in, and then write a description of your favorite project. Later, we'll get into figuring out how to participate. Uh, if you want to take the time, you can figure out how to do it, but don't worry about that right now. All right, so three projects you're interested in and a description of your favorite one. All right, so if you remember, once we got there, we were at the projects page. We scrolled down, either click in on one of the areas you're interested in or just start looking through the projects. When you find one you're interested in, 
hover over it and maybe click on it and you can learn more and find out more about what you're going to be studying and give me a short summary. All right, good luck.